I was I was recording videos today and I'm, I'm re-watching them and all you see is my head glowing like a damn light bulb. It's the <laughs> it, like I'm like, I shouldn't have shaved. Maybe the a little bit of that that stubble that's kind of there would have helped the reflective. But even right now you can see it. It's like there's like a damn flashlight on the top of my head is glowing right here. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PEPCAC podcast a weekly information security show featuring some all-around good people. It is week five of 2023. I'm your resident Amazon delivery driver and back from snow country where I dislocated my shoulder and nearly broke my arm. With me, I have my co-host Havoc the Mouthpiece, also back from snow country, but with fewer injuries. I'm still sad that you didn't actually break your arm. I think you deserved it for all the crap talking that you do. Just kidding. Uh... Yeah, the one thing, you know, snow was fun, but the best thing about coming back home, specifically in my neighborhood, is you can't just, you cannot shovel sunshine, baby. <laughs> it's true. After we got back from, it was 14 degrees where we were in snow country, then we drove back home and it was in the 60s. It was nice. Did you take your EV or did you, dude, well, I think you only have EVs, right? Yeah, yeah, I took the EV, charged once each way, and yeah, it, it turned out fine. It's all-wheel drive, so it did fine in the snow. <laughs> and it's like a tank. It's super heavy, so you were okay. Yep. And we have Frustrated Fred, and that name will stick until we find a better 2023 nickname for you, Glenn. Why am I Frustrated Fred? I don't understand. Did you not <laughs> listen to the episode <laughs> where when you weren't on we discussed this? <laughs> Oh, no. I, I guess I need to apologize for that. I've been uh, yeah. quite uh, uh, heavily induced on uh, pain medication here for the last a week, so not not so good. Brian said, you're just always anxious and you're always on edge like you need a drink. I do. <laughs> yeah. Between the people you support as an SE, as a husband, as a dad, I feel like you're just you're constantly on edge, so we call you the uh, frustrated Fred. Uh, yeah, call I know. It, call him Lebowski. How about Lebowski? Come... <laughs> Thanks, guys. I do appreciate the love that I'm getting here, but uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, lots of things on the plate, and when you're juggling them, um, you know, a couple are, are, are bound to, to fall and, and break, so it is what it is, is what I say. No talk this week, as we had a scheduling conflict, <clears throat> Glenn's fault, <clears throat> we That's hope to have him back next week combined we have decades of information security experience and are here not just to educate but to entertain we've got four awesome stories for you this week so sit back relax and enjoy the show I, i'm gonna sidebar this real quick right even if we had recorded this earlier todd still wouldn't have been able to join us so it's not my fault it is true. I had that note in here that Tyler would miss it earlier. I just thought it'd be funnier to blame you. <laughs> You're going to blame me for everything. Audio <laughs> issues, everything. Uh, what else? What else other than audio issues? Scheduling crappy issues, stories. Scheduling issues, the whole thing. Uh, crappy stories. <laughs> poor, Lack of listenership. Uh, no sponsorship. I oh my gosh. I, I need to it's always Glenn. It it's always it's Glenn. All. Thanks, guys. Feel the love. Well, happy year of the rabbit to everyone. Us here in California, the Asian American community had a rocky start to the new year, and we remember those who we senselessly lost in Monterey Park, almost Alhambra, and Half Moon Bay. So, is almost Al Al Alhambra is that the actual name of it, or are you just saying it was almost around there? So, the attacker from Monterey Park intended to commit another act of senseless violence in Alhambra, oh. but a really brave citizen tackled the guy, wrestled the gun away, and forced the guy to leave before he could do any damage. It didn't get shot and didn't shoot the, the attacker. That's amazing. I saw that, that is, video and I was like, that is That bro. is some amazing restraint on his part. Yes, the, yeah. the disarmor person. Amazing restraint. He just basically yelled at him, pointed at the door, and told him to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I would was that not another have been so Asian kind. person that did that? I, I didn't see that. Was that another Asian person that, that wrestled the, the weapon away? Yeah, it was an Asian guy with an amazing mustache as well. His mustache game was 100% on fleek, as the kids like to say. Nice. Unlike yours. Sketchy and yeah. pedophile-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the van, kids. 
I'm trying to win a bad mustache contest. I, I definitely got this one in the bag. Yeah, yeah I'm just I mean, kidding. It's not that bad. You can grow something. I can't. I couldn't grow one if I wanted to. You need to get know that. So, but I can grow hair on top of my head, unlike the uh, the, the man, like Mr. The clean over, over here. here. Yeah, Mr. Jesus. Clean manscaper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was I was recording videos today, and I'm, I'm rewatching them, and all you see is my head glowing like a <laughs> damn light bulb. Is the <laughs> like I'm like I shouldn't have shaved. Maybe the a little bit of that that stubble that's kind of there would have helped the reflective. But even right now, you can see it. It's like there's like a damn flashlight on the top of my head is glowing right here. So whatever. Yeah, what would help? Some blush. Ask for some blush. Yep. Ask Corinne yeah. or your daughters get some foundation or powder up there. That's what they do on the TV. I'm thinking wig. I know what to send you. Hmm? <laughs> wig? Maybe a hat. Ooh, I could be Beanie Brian. Beanie Brian, there you Beanie, go. Oh, Beanie. make it even look. Make make that lumberjack look even better. Yeah, <laughs> plaid shirt, flannel shirt. Just need a plaid shirt. Yeah. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash at Podcast. and another reminder to email podcast at chrislouis.net with your ask me anything questions. As we are only three more episodes away until we reach that very special episode 100. We're still finalizing plans right now for what to do for episode 100, but needless to say, it will be a very special episode you will not want to miss. This week, we're going to close the loop on a whole bunch of topics, open with new Apple product releases. For our first topic, we talk about a different type of chat GPT arms race. Next, we have Microsoft using AI to vish you. For our third topic, we have a ransomware of the week story. And we'll close with Amazon's end to their not-so-charitable program. Closing the loop this week, the Russian dark market Solaris was hacked and taken over by rival Kraken. Just straight-up hijacked. So last week we said the guy Alex Hold from Hold Security uh, hacked Solaris, the Russian darknet marketplace, stole a bunch of Bitcoin and donated it to a Ukrainian charity. I think the the rival kraken took a page out of the book and said hey these guys must be vulnerable they hacked their back end completely took everything from them and just stole all their users stole all their data and all the old solaris users now have to register on kraken that's pretty wild so i when i went to go read the article i got paywalled did were you you didn't get the paywall i don't, I see. don't think i got paywalled no i don't know what you're talking about it was like the first three sentences that was it Oh, oh you yes, mean, it is. Yeah, yeah, you have to log in. I, yeah, I think you have to use reader mode or something. So, so pro tip out there: if an article loads for you, but it's partially blocked, like I think Washington Post does it, go to Firefox or go to your mobile device and put it in reader mode, and then it allows you to read it unimpeded. That is actually a cool tip. I'll have to try that out. He said peed, reader but, mode. but you get the gist of it. That we do well. Good for them or bad for them. I don't care. They at least have a cool website name, Kraken. I like it. Kraken, yeah. They, people thought it might be politically motivated, but Kraken is has close ties to Killnet and is pro Kremlin, so it's definitely not politically motivated. Kraken is just straight up opportunist. Saw that there was a vulnerability in Solaris and stole all their users, stole all their code, and stole all their Bitcoin. That's funny. Reminds me of that one like YouTube video. It was like. Hide your wife, hide your kids. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and An- Antoine Dodson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to come and confess. We're going to find you. <laughs> Can't do the accent. Uh, the Apple Watch ECG app saves the life of a pregnant woman and her unborn baby. The Apple Watch notified her of an irregular heart condition, and after repeated notification, she went to the hospital. Turns out she was in labor and losing blood, and they were able to save her life and deliver the baby. Finally, some good, something good that came out of that. That's awesome. A, That's a really good. truly heartwarming story. You know what's funny is that same app notified me, I think, six times in 18 months that I had something wacko going on with my heart. And the first five times I got to the hospital, they said my Apple Watch is broken because everything was fine. And the sixth time we actually caught it. And so they actually hooked me up to a EKG that wasn't attached to my wrist. And they found out that I had that super ventricular tachycardia, whatever, SVT. Can't even remember the name of it. So I got to get my heart singed, boys. It's going to be fun. 
Did me, you get that thing? Chris or even still? Uh, it's coming up. Well, it happened in May, but it's the fun up. part, yeah. Uh, Chris actually had the same surgery done, so we're gonna be I did. Hart Brothers, Bros, SVT, <laughs> Bros, <Pure> and SVT <laughs> Brothers. Yep. <laughs> Apple's AirTag helps rescue a dog that was swept away in California floodwaters down in San Bernardino. So AirTags being used for good this time instead of tracking cars to steal or stalking ex-lovers. I, I call BS on this. Like, there's a proximity factor into the AirTag. It's not like it just works anywhere. They found the damn dog in, like, an access tube in the middle of nowhere. It's not like this thing was phoning it, back home. So Unless someone that happened to walk by... Yeah, that's the whole point, right? Is that yeah, it's possible. last known location yeah. based off of someone it else's iPhone? It. Yep. Yeah, it's possible, but what like this based off of where this dog was? I doubt it. I don't see that actually happening. I think they just found a dog, the original, like you know, if lost call owner, and they're like, oh yeah, AirTag saved the world. Mm, not buying it. <laughs> Such a <laughs> pessimist, Brian. T-Mobile informs customers of yet another data breach. Q roll eyes emoji here. An exposed API is to blame this time, and the information for 37 million customers are now out in the open. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. They suffered a massive data breach last year, which we covered on the podcast, because they left Telnet open on an internet-facing router. This is the eighth breach they've had since 2018. But who's counting? But apparently this was an API that they had, quote-unquote, protected. So any high sensitive data never left. So I'm thinking they must have had a WAP or a WAP. I don't know what you call it. I know what it stands for there. Maybe some sort of cool DLP policy. But still 37 million records are out there. I wonder what, what was actually included in that. Has to be some PII data. Was this bigger than last time? Or is this just another data breach? Similar amount of information. I'm just looking, trying to look for it. I think it's less. I think last time it was in the 40-something million, but I, I think there's actually PI data in this. I, if T-Mobile says nothing bad was lost, I think that's just their PR department trying to put a spin on it. I think they actually did lose some information they shouldn't have lost. Well, okay. 100%, 100% they have my data now, so oh darn. And yours too, Chris. Yep. Do you guys use, are you guys T-Mobile users? Awesome. I'm not. I didn't know you guys are T-Mobile users. Chris is just, he's frantically taking notes of what to edit out for the things. Like, I don't want anyone <laughs> knowing I have T-Mobile. No one's going to find me. Opsec, opsec fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say, within the last 20 years, I was a T-Mobile subscriber. Whether I'm currently one or not, I'll leave it up to you to decide. That's, that's fair. That's fair. I've never been a T-Mobile subscriber. Lastly, airdrop for everyone Wait, is only I'm limited for 10 minutes. Damn you. <laughs> Go ahead, so, Brian. So there's two stories. Like, it wasn't working at T-Mobile, but it was working at AT&T. And do you guys remember Mike Jones? He was a rapper. Mike Jones. Yeah. Mike Jones. He, he yeah, had that song. He's all 281-330-8004. Hit me up, up on the low. He was an AT&T customer. I plugged it into the system, and it came up. I had his house out in the middle of nowhere. It actually was said, it in the uh, middle of a lake in Oklahoma? <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was like Louisiana, I think. But yeah, they had his name and address and Mike Jones and the whole thing. So, oh, And there wow. was also... That's <clears> funny. You, and you know like how people always come in. They're like, hey, we want to pick out a phone number and we want it to spell something. And I, I promise you, anything you can spell um, has already been taken. However, a young gentleman came in... <laughs> And he ended up getting, I won't say the prefix, but it was an area code. I'm sorry, the area code. But the the last seven digits were nutsack. So I, at any point in time, <laughs> I know I can I can dial N-U-T-S-A-C-K and get, get a hold of him. He's never letting that number go, ever. Uh, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the topic of phones, lastly, AirDrop for Everyone is now limited to 10 minutes so the feature that apple rolled out to comply with chinese regulators is now it was silently added in 16.2 i noticed it was on my iphone but there was no big fanfare about it 
And just last night, I installed 16.3, which adds support for physical security keys for your two-factor authentication. And now it rolled out globally the advanced data protection, the fully end-to-end -end encrypted iCloud backups. Which happens to exclude mail contacts and calendars. But my favorite thing on the advanced data protection is that the encryption keys are only stored on the device. So they're completely wiped out from anything iCloud or Apple related, which is like freaking awesome until you drop your phone and break it. And then you're probably like, shoot, I just lost everything. That's so why you, you have the on. recovery phase phrase and you have the recovery contacts that can save it. Oh, look yeah. at that. Chris has already studied up on it. I like it. I have. It's actually really cool. Like, If you want to take a deep dive into the crypto that they did, Brian's right that right now iCloud controls the encryption keys. But when you turn this feature on, they rotate the keys and then they have your phone generate the keys, securely send it to Apple. So they completely rotate the keys, redo the encryption, and then Apple never has possession of the encryption keys. So even under court order, they cannot hand over your data. For our first topic, there's really no surprise here that Russian underground crime forums are beginning to discuss how to use OpenAI's ChatGPT chatbot while residing in Russia. Due to the sanctions against Russia because of their ongoing war in Ukraine, OpenAI's parent company of ChatGPT implemented a geofence for Russia. Members on these underground forums are trying to circumvent restrictions in three ways. Number one, bypass the geofence used chat GPT inside of Russia, and this can be done with something like a VPN. Number two, how to use stolen credit cards to register and sign up for higher tiers of chat GPT. Chat GPT implements additional controls for credit card use requiring SMS verification for the cardholder and also ban credit cards originating in Russia. Lastly, SMS verification for accounts. ChatGPT will not allow Russian phone numbers to register, so fake or virtual phone numbers have to be used. This just goes to show how powerful ChatGPT can be in the criminal underground that hackers are going to such lengths to gain access to it inside of Russia. Do you think ChatGPT would know that you're coming from a VPN? Could they geofence VPNs as well? Yeah, maybe they might follow like the Netflix or the Hulu model that says if you're coming from a proxy or a, a VPN, they'll block you or Ticketmaster does that too. All I know is that I actually went down a little bit of rabbit hole into like, what do you mean you can pay for chat GPT? And so the open AI website has like an enrollment thing and it talks about all the different things that you want and it's all API based. But the crazy example that they give is like, you can be like, Hey, uh, generate an image. So not just even text. I want to see an image of a white Siamese cat. And you're like, okay, you get it. You're like, I don't like how that looks. It's, I mean, it looks legit. So you're like, instead, give me a close up studio portrait of a white Siamese cat that looks curious with backlit ears. And this son of a gun will generate it. It is, it's frightening. Wow. Yeah. It's like it's- Dolly right there. Yeah. Art generation image Art generator. Gen but yeah, you get text completion, image generation, fine tuning, code completion, embeddings. And I was, I think I went on to the, let me double check some of the examples. So they have like APIs for Slack. Like you can create a chat GPT channel in Slack and talk to it just like you would anyone else yeah. in your organization. Yeah, um, there's they have one, I think. So for the really lonely people out there, there is a friend chat. So you just want to create an API and have it talk to like you just hanging out with uh, Glenn and Chris on, on uh, Signal. Yeah, they can do that. I tried using it the other day and said chat GPT was full. Please wait or sign in later. Is it just because so many people are hitting that service? Yeah. Yeah, there's exactly sites that. you can look up to find out when the peak usage is and then not use it at that time. Uh, did you guys see, I, I asked it to write a biography based off of my work history. So I was like, hey, write, write a quick biography of me. Uh, these are the places I worked. This is what I did. And it spit out yeah. something. I was like, hey, you know what? make it a little bit more risky, a little bit more fun and playful. And it was like, I'm talking to something like it's a chat, right? It's not like, yeah. Uh, asking mm -hmm. these linear questions, Natural get language back. processing. Yeah. yeah. And it comes back and, and create, rewrites the thing. Create my resume. <laughs> That's awesome. It was insane. Like it was, it was spot on. Like yeah. I was like, wow. But, and, it, and it did make it fun. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think? Some of the first things though, if we go back to the story, right, that the Russians are going to do is like, tell me 
something about what? I mean, like I said, maybe I just don't have that devious type of mind. I think they're going to use it to write better ransomware. I, I'm i pretty sure we did a story a couple of weeks ago about it where ChatGPT will literally write code for you or it'll tell you right. what's wrong with your code. So they take mm-hmm. some crappy off-the-shelf ransomware and say, hey, make this better. And I think there's actually a story yesterday that was released that ChatGPT is being used to make polymorphic malware that's undetectable by signatures. So I think that's probably what they're yeah. looking for. Okay. I'll tell you why I would use it. The instructions for the Zeus malware is all in Russian. So I'd be like, hey, can you translate this for me, please? Because <laughs> Google Translate did a terrible job. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I think they're just going to use it to perfect their code and maybe make better better decisions, better business decisions, better write better malware, build a better business model. But yeah, the possibilities are endless and everyone in Russia wants to get their hands on it. This is it. Start a Skynet right here. Are you exactly. guys ever polite to chat GPT? Like, are you like, hey, can you do this for me, please? And thank you. No. There's there's a funny, like, four-panel comic about that. Where, like, in the first panel, someone says, you know, hey, Google, play some music for me, please. And then the second pane, the the guy says, hey, how come you're being so nice to it? And then the third pane, the, guy's, the original guy says, I don't know. You never know. And then the fourth pain is the robots are taking over and a robot's holding the original guy upside down. And another robot says, uh, not him. He was always polite. Keep him alive. <laughs> we'll use him for batteries. There yeah, you know. right. I'm going to delete all my old chats. I'm going to start using nice language with them. <laughs> all right. For our second topic, keeping with our AI theme, Microsoft, who is an investor in OpenAI and ChatGPT, they develop an in-house software tool called Volley that can mimic someone's voice with just three seconds of audio. You can see the practical applications of this, such as after Toy Story actor Don Rickles died, they synthesized his voice for Toy Story 4 two years after his death. This can also be abused by threat actors for so-called vishing or voice phishing campaigns to impersonate someone into believing they're speaking to someone they are not. There have been successful vishing campaigns against companies with BEC scams when someone pretending to be the CEO calls someone in the accounting department and asks them to wire some money or change a bank account number. Just three seconds of audio and volley can impersonate nearly anyone. And that is why I refuse to use voice authentication for my bank, despite their best efforts to try and get me to enroll. We have Literally thousands of hours of my voice from this podcast and other recordings that I do. This is scary now. That is really, really scary. The amount of disinformation that we can start to create. So between that, think about, all right, so you have this. And then there's that America's Got Talent thing where they were doing the the real life streaming of a mm-hmm. person's face. Simon and then, Cowell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Simon Cowell. That's crazy. You sent that to us in the group chat and that was... Quite impressive what they're able to do with that. Yeah, real t- yeah, real time. Just take our face and put everyone on there. Like it's gonna be sketchy. Like it's gonna be so hard to distinguish like like what's real versus what's fake. I looked at the research paper. It's like fifteen pages long, and two things that came out of it. One, I can't tell if they need a certain phrase that's three seconds long to profile it, or is it is any three seconds. And then the second part is, dear God, the amount of math. It goes into here, blew my mind. Yeah. And think about it, it's kind of like name my tune. I can name that tune in three seconds. Like, oh my gosh, I know I can hear that voice. That's totally crazy. Yeah. I remember when they recorded the voice, the original voice of Siri, they had the voice actor read a series of phrases and that covered like 99.9% of all the, the femones in the English language. So it might be that, Brian, that they just need three seconds of a specific phrase and that's all it takes yeah. to synthesize someone's voice for the entire English English language. But I'm with you, Chris. No more voices. Never use it for your password. Period. This is just the beginning of the end. So oh the next my time gosh. Jay calls you and says, I need to buy I need you to buy me some gift cards. You'll have to call him back at a known good number before you actually buy it. Don't believe his voice. Well that's true. So you take someone like our C- well, Jay's difficult because there's so much audio out there. But a three-second clip of Jay isn't going to pick up any of his mannerisms. Like, it would sound like Jay, but he's very distinguished in his delivery and things like that. I'd be curious to see how well Valdi actually works here. But 
but I think there's other things that are involved in that as well, right? Like, I, so I'm, you know, when we get off this podcast, right, I'm going to send a message to the kids telling them about, you know, this, this, this volley and the ability to take three seconds. And if, if you get a call that sounds like me, that's asking you for information, don't give it right. Uh, there's got to be a secret code. So, yep. you know, you've got to set some kind of safeguards up with your kids, family, employees that, Hey, if you get a call from me asking for gift cards, um, you either ask why or ask for the secret code and yeah, see what or I change a bank with. account number or send a large yeah. wire transfer. Yeah, you guys are ridiculous. BEC scam. Nope, yeah. I'm going black hat with this. I am going to use this. I'm not, number one. My wife will never know about it. Number two, every time we have a disagreement, I'm going to play a voice memo of her contradicting herself. I'm like, see, you already said this. What are you, talking? <laughs> you told me I could buy a car. You said a Lamborghini is wow, fine, that's honey. So awesome. That is. Said awesome. I could have an additional bowl of cashews tonight. I have you on yeah. audio here. Yeah. <laughs> cashews. What are you talking about, Chris? The next year, beer. Be a man. <laughs> All right. Since Brian told me to be a man for our third topic, and this will be our <laughs> ransomware story of the week. Riot Games, the makers of the smash hit League of Legends, was just ransomware this past week. Attackers infiltrated and stole the source code for League of Legends by social engineering one of their developers. The breach was limited to the development environment and no player data was exposed, but the hackers made contact and demanded 10 million US dollars to not release the source code, but Riot so far has refused to pay. Riot follows an interesting trend from 2022 where Ransom payments to threat actors fell by 40% compared to 2021 because so many companies are just refusing to pay the ransom. According to research done by Chainalysis, total money received by ransomware actors in 2022 fell to just $457 million down from the record $766 million the year before. As Brian likes to say, that's still a lot of scratch. You know, I you know what other trend they're following? The New York Stock Exchange and, and the Dow Jones, if you, if you ask me. Down forty percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and crypto <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> FTX. Downfall. Hey, crypto's mooning again. Bitcoin's above twenty three thousand again. Uh, do you guys did you guys hear the rumor of as to why it was mooning? I did not. It's 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 always something. What what's it this time? So this one had to do with all the grounded flights. I think it was last week. Southwest. Yeah, what, that was over yeah, the Christmas, though. No, it was it was the alert system, right? The NORAD yeah, alert Nomad. system. Nomad. Yeah. So the NORAD, rumor is... Nor, NORAD. 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 NORAD, excuse it's me. The no, it's the yeah, NORAD, Nomad. But it, I think it's the Nomad system. It, it's a specific system that alerts planes when a VIP flight or the Air Force One or a military flight is going through airspace. If that's down, no plane could take off. Gotcha. So the rumor is there was ransomware and that the U.S. government paid in Bitcoin, which is why this thing is now mooning at 23K. Uh, all the official reporting, and I'll put official in quotes, all the official yeah. reporting says it was some contractor that fat-fingered a database sink and deleted all the data. Maybe that contract. And if you believe yeah, that, yeah. we have a bridge to sell you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I got to call fake news on this entire article. The smash hit League of Legends. Never heard of it. What about you, Glenn? It, it's yeah. like literally the biggest game streaming on Twitch right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, tell if you're being uh, sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've never heard of it. The biggest game in the Deach household is Dude. Fortnite. They've <clears throat> they've sold out Ma Madison Square Garden um, within like fifteen minutes, yeah, for a strip for one of their champions championship uh, events. Yeah, yeah, League of Legends bigger than Fortnite. All right, I'm going on Twitch right now just to prove you wrong. I want to see how many how many people are playing LOL right now. It, the The biggest news that I heard for a long time ago was just them just getting bought out by Tencent. Tencent, right? Japanese. So, Ten cent Chinese, yeah, yeah. Can I uh, can I play okay. this on so Xbox? League of Legends is not number one right now. So Grand Theft Auto Five is number one. Volorant, I never even heard of that one. That's oh, yeah, number two. Okay. League of Legends number three. There you go. But Your they're story. always top, probably top five. You know, rotating through depending on 
when the latest um, latest release comes out, right? But it's yeah. the long. It's probably one of the longer ongoing games as well. As Ricky Bobby said, "If you ain't first, you're last." Actually, I think that's his dad, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think people would take issue with you saying that League of Legends is not a smash hit. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Yeah, so for comparison, Fortnite right now has 54,000 viewers and League of Legends has 74,000 viewers. So they have about 20,000 more viewers right now on Twitch. All I know is there's 74,000 yeah. losers watching someone play video games. Good job. <laughs> there, goes, there, goes the, there goes the adage. Yeah, there goes remember? that demographic and that sponsorship. There goes the <laughs> adage of my mom telling me when I was younger that you'll never make any money playing video games. Get off that video game. And you, you see these things where these events are like two, four million dollar purses. For no, she was million. right. You suck at video games. So I'm with your mom on that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I get vertigo now. So, yeah. Well, Riot did say that as a result of this breach, they have to. I don't know if they have to burn everything to the ground, but they're not releasing any updates because they just can't afford any kind of supply chain injection. They have to code review everything before they can release any kind of updates to, to anything. So the League of Legends players, their roadmap got set back, I don't know how many months now. So that's definitely going to have a business impact. I had a, I had a buddy that sold into Riot Games, and this would probably be about 10 years ago. And the one thing about Riot Games, at least back then, culturally wise, they were just like jerks. They just thought that their their stuff didn't stink and that they can do it better than anybody else. So I wonder if this is uh, coming around to bite them in the pants. It's a little bit of hubris, right? Yeah. Pride yeah. cometh before the fall. All right. For our last topic, and it will be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about Amazon Smile. I got an email from Amazon stating that they were ending the Amazon Smile program amid cost-cutting measures. Are you guys familiar with Amazon Smile? I am now, yeah. only because of this stupid article. But anytime you would share a link with me for an Amazon thing, it would always come through with Smile. That Amazon, what the hell is Chris doing? What is this? Like, I had no idea, and then I lost interest. I just clicked on the link, and I was like, "Oh, thanks, Chris." And that was no, it. I'm just. I'm Amazon sad because every time my kid, I see credit card charges for my kids always buying something from Amazon. So I should just buy stock in Amazon is what the, and at the end of the day is what I should be doing. Yeah. If you really want to be sad. 2019. You can, yeah. You can actually download all of your purchases and then put them into a little Excel spreadsheet and see how much money you've flushed down the oh. toilet with them. Yeah. Let's not go there. That's not a good <laughs> idea. So they said never do the math, right? Yeah, you guys should we do that and see who spent the most so far? I well, I, I don't want to know. No, I'm I'm happier not knowing. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should. Do if it it's now. anything like your if it's anything like your Costco receipts, I'm not going to compete with you. So yeah, <laughs> I think you guys I had are a lot of fun with Amazon before they started charging sales tax here in California. We we bought a lot of stuff for like the house and things because they they never collected sales tax. Although I, I legally have to say I mailed the sales tax to the F, you know franchise tax board every year at the end of the year I'd calculate I mailed them a check I never did sales tax evasion by using Amazon. Did you Nor almost you. slip and say FBI? <laughs> FTB Franchise Tax Board. Yeah, board, yeah, yeah. We have a weird acronym here in California. Well, anyways, Amazon started a program to donate a portion of your eligible sale to charity. All you had to do was type smile.amazon.com into your address bar and they would donate a portion of the sale of the item you bought as long as it was sold and fulfilled by Amazon. It seemed like a great program. It was literally free money for your favorite charity. This That is until some ex-Amazon engineers who worked on the program went on Reddit and explained its origin. It turns out that a good amount of traffic to Amazon was driven there by rival Google. Someone would type in, say, best leaf blower money can buy into Google, and Google would link to a leaf blower on Amazon. If the user bought it after getting directed there by Google, Amazon would have to pay an affiliate fee to Google for the referral. In response, Amazon didn't create an Amazon Smile because the donation only works when a user explicitly types in smile.amazon.com 
into their address bar and not go through Google. Amazon wanted to make the program cost neutral. So whatever affiliate fee they were paying to Google, which was their rival, they could donate to charity. Amazon gets some good PR and Google loses some revenue. So it was a win-win. This should have been obvious to me because Amazon Smile was not supported in their mobile app for the longest time. And when it was finally supported, there was an opt-in model and users would have to opt in several times a year. It would auto opt you out over time. It was like Amazon was trying to make it difficult for the Amazon app users to enroll and it worked. Sorry, I'm over here on mute, just talking away. It makes sense. What's kind of interesting though is that Google does, I mean, it's, it's, it's like the default search engine for, for things for so many, you know, uh, browsers and whatnot. And you just have so many people that just use it. I think I've done an incredible job educating my family that if you are going to use Google, we don't click on sponsored links. And in fact, even if you're at the house, at least none of those links work, you just get blocked, just pie hole, uh, dump it. The pie hole. And then one day my daughter's boyfriend came over and his older brother came over and I forget what we were doing, but he's literally using Google to do shopping. I was like, there, I'm like, what the hell do you mean Google shop? Like, he's like, yeah, man, it's a great way to find stuff. I've never in my entire life used Google to purchase anything in the entire world. I didn't even know that was a thing. I maybe look for product reviews, but I wouldn't go out to yeah. shopping.google to, you know, see what's available out there. I've used it just to balance out what I'm seeing on Amazon. And half the time, it's it's pointing to Amazon anyway, just probably like the way it's done here. Um, then, then, of course, you know, products that you can't find in Amazon. I do a lot of car restoration things. So some of the parts aren't on Amazon or, you know, on the used, used market. Um, so probably the only only way I'm going to find it. And it's either on the, from there, it's, it, it probably points to eBay half the time. More than half yeah, the time. those very niche items. Yeah, there's a website yeah. I haven't been on in forever. eBay. Wow, it's eBay. still <laughs> that resolve still, guys. Yeah. Wow. I just bought some stuff there last week, so I, it it works. Yeah. I think I think that Go and Bing both also have shopping search engines as well. They've integrated shopping into the search engine. Use DuckDuckGo shopping. Try that. Hmm. I used to leave the most inappropriate positive feedback on eBay. When I was like oh, on boy. there back in the day, like incredible, <laughs> let's get demonetized. Incredible reseller, <laughs> babies tasted delicious. I'm like, what? like people be like, what the hell? Five stars. <laughs> yeah. They probably just yeah. took the five stars. And didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so it was incredible. A little weird, but he had it delivered <laughs> before. I, stars. He had it delivered before I even pressed send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google Google shopping is good for yeah, like I said, price comparison. I don't think they vet their stores. I was, I was looking for a fairly obscure item and it was listed for maybe 50% off the retail price uh, and 50% off the next cheapest person. And then I Googled the store name and all the results came back. Scam, scam, scam. Don't, don't buy from these guys. Scam, scam. So I don't think Google does a ton of vetting. It, they are just a search engine at the end of the day. And I think they just find the cheapest price out there. I'm going to agree with you. So I, story, right? Daughter, youngest daughter wants to go out and buy some Nikes. So she's searching the internet. She searches for a certain Nike shoe. She finds it on Google shop and she says, dad, can we buy this shoe? And I'm looking at the store and I'm like, the store makes no sense. It's like, it just, it looks good, but there's no context around it. And then, you know, I run it through, you know, URL filter, you know, URL, URL checker and analyzer, it, yeah. analyzer. And it's just bad. It's a bad website, right? Just a scam website. And I told my daughter, oh, I'm so glad you didn't put the credit card number in there. And I told her, I had to, you had to educate them, right? Like all, not all things are safe on the internet, even though you think it could be as easy as searching for a pair of Nike shoes or a pair of shoes in general, you know, it's just not the same. Yeah, just because you see that green padlock doesn't mean anything anymore. It could be a, yeah. a free cert from Let's Encrypt. Yeah. I will share one more cost-saving pro tip. So as you know, Brian says I'm the richest cheapskate he knows. So here's a pro tip. Frugal. This is how I... Frugal. 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 <laughs> That's not what Brian said. <laughs> cheapskate. <laughs> 
so the, when I bought my TV, I actually bought I bought a nice LG OLED TV, and I bought it from I think I bought it from Best Buy. So there's a trick, and I'm gonna tell you the trick of why why I did it this way. So I bought the TV from Best Buy. I paid you know full retail for it. Let's call it two thousand bucks, <laughs> and <laughs> I paid with a no no hold on hold on. <laughs> So I, I bought it with a credit card that has what's called pricing protection. So if you find a cheaper price within three months, they'll refund you the difference. So I bought the TV at Best Buy, 2000 bucks. I bring it home. I set it up. I go online to something like shopping.google.com. And there are these scam stores on the East Coast. So anything in New York, New Jersey, immediately your alarm should go off. And these are the stores that have one-star reviews. And they say, you order the TV for a thousand bucks and then they bait and switch you they said this this model's out i'll sell you the next model up for you know 1700 bucks and or they'll steal your credit card one one or the other so what i did was i told my credit card company i found the same tv from this retailer in new york and it was 1500 bucks my credit card company goes on the website says yes this is the same tv yes it's in stock here's your check for 500 dollars. that's the difference so i get the legit tv and then i don't get scammed <laughs> that's awesome that, but that store reminds me yeah <laughs> that no, store no. reminds me of meet the zohan remember meet the zohan where it's like uh, going out of business uh, is the name of the company is the name of the store you guys remember i, meet I the watched zohan? that movie a long long time ago so i don't remember exactly <laughs> yeah, you don't mess with the enough. zohan yeah, yeah that's so funny so what credit card is this at the time it was discover so my discover card had what was called pricing protection i think the Costco City card might have it as well. But yeah, it's 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 and it's only up to a limit. Like the maximum you can get back is like six hundred bucks or something. But mm-hmm. it's it's not exactly scamming the scammer. You're getting the price difference, but you don't risk buying it from a store that's gonna scam you. So you buy it from the legit store, you price yeah. match it to the scam store, and then you get it at that price, but you buy it from a legit retailer. I feel like there's some dishonest activities here somewhere. <laughs> it, I could Chris be, has got a I bunch of fake wrong. stores out there. <laughs> as long as it follows all the terms and conditions, you know, of the program. It was vetted by them and they approved it. Yeah. I got my check. I would Speaking say... Of, co- uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, please, please. I, all right. I was going to say, I would say for online shopping, probably 95% of everything that we buy is on Amazon. The only thing that I would say that we don't buy off of Amazon is going to be specifically around like shoes or clothes. I just won't buy from Amazon when it comes to that kind of stuff. But if I were to like go buy like a monitor, right? And so let's say I'm looking at this LG monitor is 300 bucks and I could save 50 bucks by buying it through Newegg. I'm just going to buy it through Amazon. I'll spend the extra 50. I just want the hassle. Are you guys like that too? a to z guarantee and then hopefully you have the prime card that gives you five percent back yeah so i i do want to my, my shopping order goes this costco first um costco online and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of something about between co- buying on costco and costco online um and the reason for that is because they've got a great return policy you can return anything anytime months later no questions asked other than you know certain things like computers and electronics, and electronics. yeah 90 days they used that. to do yeah. computers yeah. that was nice yeah yeah um and then from there i go to amazon and then from amazon i i actually check walmart i i do i do price check against walmart right and 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 sam's club um and then what's really nice about amazon as of late is that prime is the ability to return stuff at the ups store unpackaged right yeah so it's no like box you, you no open box the box up yeah you put the you put the device together and you know you got a shelving unit you just bring it over there they take it and they scan it now i i do have to I, there's a couple things that bother me about this because sometimes you can bring that back um and and they'll take it back no problems with the qr code but the other day i bought a light switch and i swear to god i thought i saw i bought it off of a prime you know based off of prime and it was amazon fulfillment but I still had to box it up and send it back with a packing slip. That kind of drew me out. I was like, I thought, you think all things would be done that way with Amazon? You would think, yeah. It's <clears throat> Occasionally, you have to box it in the back. And then for me, you can't return everything to the UPS store. Sometimes you have to mail it back through the post office. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to go to a Kohl's store or else you have to pay to return it to UPS stores. There's, It's kind of random what they do. Yeah. Or drop it off at an Amazon locker. Yeah. 
continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, I'm up. A couple of cows were smoking marijuana and playing poker. Man, the stakes were high. <laughs> Chris wah, with the wah, weed wah. joke. You're lucky yeah. it's legal. Or you have to edit Is this that out. safe? Is that really a dad joke? No, yeah, it's a dad joke. That's a good it's a dad joke. joke. It's an adult dad joke. All right, to wrap things up, Apple will save your life and protect your data while giving the finger to the FBI. T-Mobile gets hacked again. Russian actors are trying to circumvent a number of chat GPT safeguards. Microsoft wants to speak for you. Riot Games follows a new trend of not paying ransoms. And Amazon was never charitable. They just hated Google. That's all I have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pebcac Podcast. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers who rated us five stars in the iTunes store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find it is to search for the Pebcac Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For our co-host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next weekend. As always, have a nice day. Episode 100 is going to be all the stuff that you've edited out over the last 100 episodes. (laughs) And stop. (laughs)